Something I want to do while we're talking about Disney is dissect the Disney Plus offering a little bit, because I know as a shareholder, this is something I have looked to and said, this is the no-brainer service, right? If you're a parent and you have young kids, you pretty much have to have it because that's what they want. They want that IP <laughs> library. So you assume they're going to bundle a lot of the kids' programming. I would think so. Obviously, some of that is licensed elsewhere, but eventually, just like they pulled back everything Marvel from Netflix, eventually they're going to pull back whatever they can pull back. So you're going to get your your Mickey Mouse and Goofy and Pluto, and eventually the library of movies and and all the stuff that every kid watches a thousand times. That's going to be an enticement. Where they have an advantage over Netflix, and we've talked about this a few times personally and and on the air, is that. They know in creating two Star Wars shows, unless those shows are terrible, which they won't be given the creative people involved, um, I'm going to watch that. <laughs> Michael Douglas is going to watch that. Yes, for not, the, the, not the actor. Not the, the actor. The, 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 I was going to say, for those of you who have been an industry focus <laughs> follower for a long time, you know Michael's name. He's, yeah. he's a very big Star Wars fan, along, <laughs> along with me. When they launch a, a show based on Loki, starring Tom Hiddleston, the actor who played him in the movies, that's going to be a major draw. And I don't think, I look at Netflix, if there's one show I'm watching that gives me something to do tonight, that is worth it to me. Mm -hmm. Disney won't have to make as many shows to hit all the age demographics. Plus, they do have whatever they own through ABC. I don't know. Roseanne reruns. I'm not, <laughs> not really sure what, what ABC owns and doesn't own. Uh, all the old Wide World, the Disney's, all the archival programming. But in terms of their new content spend, they're going to be able to figure out Gee, Dylan is not a Star Wars fan, <laughs> but this is what we own. He loves Pirates of the Caribbean. And we are going to do a show based on the young Captain Jack. I don't even remember <laughs> if that's the guy's name. I think it, it is. It is. It's Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't have to build out the library and spend, you know, eight billion, fourteen billion, whatever it is that Netflix wants to drop to create shows that they can then spread fixed cost over. Uh, so the the financials look a little bit different. But thinking about Disney Plus a little bit. You you tell someone okay they're getting into streaming this is where the industry is going that sounds like a game changer and then you start looking at the numbers a little bit and it's not quite the case no nobody else so everybody's launching a streaming service yeah most of the wireless carriers that are in the content AT and T and Verizon they're it, all the broadcast networks on some level are talking about. You know, and obviously Comcast is NBC and Disney owns ABC. CBS has their service with Star Trek and. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the 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 Good Wife spinoff, the Good Fight, but Disney can do this in a way that really nobody else can. You could argue maybe if Comcast and Sony teamed up, maybe they'd have even half of what Disney can launch with. Mm -hmm. But think about it: they could do a spinoff of Frozen and an adult themed X Men show. <laughs> like, right, not that adult. It's Disney, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they but they have the content library to draw on. I think what's interesting though is you hear that and you think, okay, this should be a boon for them financially. And the reality is, it's a cost for a long time. It's a cost for a long time, and I think even if it hits the scale that a Netflix is at, it isn't going to be a huge, huge driver short term for them financially because. They've already talked about in the past how they know they can't price at what Netflix is at because, and CEO Bob Iger has said this, they have less volume. They're not going to have the depth in terms of product library. They're going to have everything you want to watch. <laughs> See, I don't think they could launch at eleven ninety nine a month. I think they're going to have to launch at six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, or do uh, what what some of the other services have done: give you a year for sixty bucks or whatever you pay up front. But I think the reality is, it's not going to take them that long of dollar a year price increases <laughs> to, to get where they need to be. And this will hurt third rate streaming services. Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to maybe drop DC Universe, WWE Network, MLB, whatever it is, if you're only kind of using it? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> because your whole family is going to get value out of this. But I really do think this becomes the one that. Yeah, you're going to have Netflix, you're going to have Disney, you'll have Amazon Prime, not because you're paying for it, because you like free delivery. Yeah. And maybe you'll have, whether it's Hulu or Sling or your streaming service, that's going to be your like $60, $70, $80 cable bill. And 
you know, I don't see anybody else being able to to get in as cheaply as Disney's going to be able to get in. I 100% agree with you, Dan. In, ter- in terms of uh, the pricing being, we need to start low and see exactly where the price sensitivity is. But knowing that they're probably going to be coming in at seven dollars or eight dollars, you think about it, right? If they get a hundred million subscribers <laughs> years out from now, not immediately, because this will launch in late 2019. That's not going to be a huge boost to the top line for them because they are a big business. They make, I think, sixty billion in trailing twelve month revenue. No, it's not. But it's also going to be all of the other things you can do with that. Mm-hmm. So, this will support more theme park rides. They will, in theory, make stars out of characters that were in their universe but weren't stars. So that becomes meet and greets. That becomes more pajamas. It becomes video games, um, and it's sort of all the ability to just get every nickel out of what they have. And much like Netflix, Netflix is spending six to eight billion, whatever the number is. That's not a forever number, because at some point they're going to say we have this huge library, and all we need is for the existing customer the one or two things they're going to watch every quarter. So you're not, if you're Disney, going to have to build once you have ten seasons of Star Wars: The Mandalorian. And whatever the other Star Wars show is going to be, maybe you only have a Star Wars series that you know produces 13 episodes every two years. You're not going to need the level of content spend as you build the library, and your library is going to be way more hit driven. I mean, there are shows like if I said The Ranch and the Laptop, do you know which one is a Netflix show? <laughs> I know The Ranch is a Netflix show, and I've can never pro- I've never watched it. Can you promise me The Laptop isn't? I can't. <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> They're both nouns. Uh, 